Look at this, I'm using React DevTools to inspect components and view a debug value for my custom hook useAuth. You can see I'm getting specific information from the hook. I'm doing this with the built-in React hook useDebugValue. Let's see how it works. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at the React hook use debug value. You'll need the React DevTools extension installed for this tutorial, and I've provided a link in the description for React DevTools in case you haven't already installed them. The use debug value hook is only used with custom hooks. Let's look at the custom hook use auth that I recently created for a React login tutorial. This is a very simple hook. We are using context and we have an auth context that handles the global auth state in this this app. So what we've got is the import of use context and importing the auth context like we would to use context. And what this helps is then in the rest of the application, we can just import use auth and get what we need out of this context without always creating the two imports, always assigning auth context to use context. So a very simple hook, but this allows us to demonstrate use debug value very simply in this tutorial as well. To start with, we'll need to import use debug value at the top alongside the use context. So we've got use debug value there. And now down here inside of use auth, I'll go ahead and pull something out of the context so we can use it in the debug value as well. So we've got auth here, and this will be equal to the use context and we'll pass in auth context. Normally, we would just be having this one return line in this hook, but just for the use of use debug value, we'll pull the auth out here. Okay, now we're going to use debug value. And first, we'll just pass along some information because the docs say really use debug value is to create a custom label in the dev tools. So you could just say something like custom label. And now I'll save this and we'll start up the React app and see what it displays in the DevTools. Okay, I've got the React app running. We're going to right click somewhere in the component and choose Inspect, or you can do Control Shift I. And now with DevTools open, let's go to the drop down menu here with the two greater than signs. And you can see with React DevTools installed, you have components and profiler here that we didn't used to have. Let's choose components and inspect the component. And we can see that it shows the hooks that we have in the component. And here is our use auth hook. It just shows up as auth, just like use navigate just shows up as navigate from React Router and use location just shows up as location. But here we can see our custom label. Now that doesn't help us a whole lot though, so it would be much better to provide some useful information there. Let's go back to the code and put something else there instead of the label. Okay, we're running React there, I'll close the terminal. But instead of this label, let's put some useful information. So first of all, we could just put the auth state and look at what is shared with the auth state. So if we do that, and now we go back, we notice we have an empty object. We haven't logged in. So I'll go ahead and log in because I've got this linked up to a backend node server. And now I remember the password. There we go. And so now that we're logged in, we've got a different page here. So I'll go back to the link page, go back to the login page, and inspect once again. And we'll need to go to our components tab. And now we can see our object is showing right here beside our use auth hook. So we have the access token, anything else that was stored in that object. And here's the debug value actually showing in the context below. So we can do it that way, but it actually helps to have some more useful information. As I showed you the logged in or logged out information, we don't necessarily need every value to show, although we could break it down and here's the user, the password, the roles, the access token, everything's available if we put the auth in there, but that's not exactly what we want. We just want some useful information we can quickly glance at and logged in or logged out would be useful in that instance. Going back to the code, we can easily provide that and we can just use a ternary statement to do so. So here we can say if we have a user and we're using optional chaining for that, then we know we're logged in. If not, we would have an empty object. So now a ternary and we can say 
logged in. And of course, if not, we say logged out. And now let's save and go back and look at our app once again. You can see it says we're logged in. At a glance, that is very helpful. Likewise, we could go back in our app and I could of course choose to log out by clicking the sign out button. And now we'll go to the login page and I'll once again inspect and we need to go back to the components tab. And now we can see logged out next to our use auth hook. Now, while this may be obvious at the sign in form that we're logged in or logged out, let's go ahead and look at another place in the app where this is used. And then we'll be able to see how it might be valuable somewhere. So let's go to the lounge because I'm an editor and admins and editors can hang out here as it says. So I'm going to inspect this and now we'll go to the component tab and we'll need to drag this down and look at the components that took us to get there. And in our require auth component is where we're using this auth hook once again. So now we know we're logged in and we can see that value logged in here under the hooks as well. And if we expand this, it once again has the context. So any place this hook is used, we can inspect that component as we're now in the require auth component and see the logged in status. There's one more thing we can do for our use debug value that may help out. And that's because it actually accepts two parameters. And the first is the value we want to send. So we can put that, and this would also be the label but then here in the second parameter, it actually accepts a function. So we can just pass auth in as a parameter here to an anonymous function. And then we can format. This is a formatting function. And now it will only do this calculation if the dev tools are open and the component is inspected instead of just doing it all the time whenever the component loads. Now that could be very useful if you had an expensive operation and you only really wanted it to run, of course, when DevTools is open. And that's really the only time you would need this. So even if it's not an expensive operation, this is probably a good practice to pass in your value, but then use that value in the formatting function if you're going to do any type of calculation and you want that as the second parameter. So this will give us the same result, but you're using the formatting function here for any operation. So overall, use debug value is great for creating a custom label that can give you a little bit more information when you're creating a custom hook. And you don't need to use it for every custom hook. It's recommended in the docs that you really use it only when you're creating a shared library. In other words, you're creating a custom hook that would be published and used by others. And maybe if they're trying to learn more about the hook, they're going to inspect with React DevTools and look at what values it provides. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.